Good morning. I don't know why I was going that way. Good morning. How are we all doing? It's six minutes past 11, which in my book is 10 a.m. ish. <laughs> nice. Nice. No. no. Okay. Anyway. Uh, good morning. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. You can tell very clearly because I'm wearing my blue hat today. I decided to wear my Super Nintendo t shirt um, and I thought it's blue and white. So I'm going to go for the ice cream uploads blue hat. But anyway, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day. And this guy should. He is unmuted. I've just seen the word files. This guy is the guy that we call Bibi. I'll read Bib. Should. He good morning, Shaggers. How's it going? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. How are we all doing? If you're in the chat, please, please, please feel free to get involved in the conversation today. We have some tasty stories. We actually have some advancements in the world of video games. <gasps> I know, I know, amazing. But we tend to have that all the time recently, but we've got some some pretty tasty news stories. But uh, if you don't know, as mentioned, uh, my name is Graham. This is Bibi, and we are Ice Cream Uploads. He kind of says on that, you get the idea. No, it's, uh, it says on Bibi's as well, but you can't quite see it. This is a little bit smaller at the moment. But uh, yes, we are Ice Cream Uploads, and in true Ice Creamy fashion, this is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, even if we do say so ourselves. Anyway, we are going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games. And we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions too. If you're in the chat, please feel free to do that. Give us those thoughts and impressions because we do go live, which is what we are doing right now. If you're here with us live, I mean, you could be watching this. On, oh, my God, okay, we'll leave that conversation. But we do go live uh, at 10 a.m. Ish. Each Ish. and every single weekday. Ish. Each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We, we aim for 10 a.m. Um, sometimes it could be on the money. Not very often. Sometimes it's a little bit <laughs> after. And sometimes it could be an hour or so after. The reason that happens is because we do work in the video games industry. Uh, industry. Shout out to uh, Jelly Media Massive. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's where the name ice cream comes from. Jelly and ice cream. <laughs> um so we do work in the video games industry, and that stuff kind of comes first. Ice cream, we kind of uh, fit in around that. So we appreciate everyone that does tune in uh, in the mornings for the scoop. And when we play video games and when we host special events and stuff and, and the live stream watch-alongs of video game events, we appreciate you all being here because it does mean a lot. Um, but that is why we do go live at 10 a.m.-ish. Anyway, uh, it's important that if you are in the chat, as mentioned, you please give us those thoughts and impressions because we turn the live stream into a podcast, a video that goes on YouTube and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, all those places people can watch and listen on demand. If you're watching and listening on demand now, hey, how are you doing? YouTubers, <laughs> hit the like, do it. Uh, if you are watching and listening on demand, nice. Uh, but you guys don't get involved with us live while we're on air. And that's what you guys in the, in the chat on Twitch do. So please feel free to use your voice on behalf of everyone else. Uh, before we go any further... As I usually do, I'll remind you of the loot drop. Subscribers, you guys get access to a giveaway that is exclusive for subscribers. Nobody that uh, isn't a subscriber doesn't get access to that. And that's not because we want to alienate people. That's just because we want to give back to the people that give a little bit to us uh, in the chat. So, uh, yeah, nice. Subs, make sure you get involved. Exclamation mark loot drop in the chat. Chat box should be open. Um, this month's prize is is a copy of Valheim. Um, but if you don't have a PC, or you've already got it, or you're not interested in it, we will give you another game, because we're not we're not that evil. We want to make sure that you're getting bits back for your subs. So, so yes, there you go. Nice. Anyway, jumping into the chat, Kulan says, um, I can't even read that. It's an exclusive Ice Cream Upload sub subscriber <laughs> and more. That actually, it's, it sounds a little bit like this. Stay frosty? No, 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 not that Ish. one. No, let's go. No, not that one either. Oh, 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 yeah, I see you. Yeah, yes. No, <laughs> it's the Hello. other one. Hello. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, obviously, the subs, as well as getting uh, access to the loot, you get the emotes. Nice, nice. Um, Mr. Gary Clark says, Morning, Shaggers, with all of the emotes. Madge is here as well. Graham is a bit blue today. Uh, Dabba D. Yeah, I put on the Super Nintendo T-shirt, and I had the um, <laughs> the black uh, ice cream uploads uh, blackout hat, and I just thought, Do you know what, I wear that all the time because it's it's pretty uh, suave. It goes with anything, obviously. Uh, but I thought, Do you know what, blue on blue. Uh, actually, that sounds like. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, we'll move yeah. away from that. <laughs> I, I, I do also yeah. look like I've been working in an ice cream parlor, wearing a blue and white T-shirt and a blue and white hat. I just like I'm full on <laughs> serving you two scoops. Flake. He's excited for the Man City draw later on, aren't you, mate? That's what it is. <laughs> Port all that, mate. Port all, mate. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all the easy draws, mate. <laughs> uh, he isn't, but but looks like Bibby is wearing a cardigan. I was going to say all he needs is a pipe and a flat cap <laughs> to complete the look. Back in my oh. day. 
I'm wearing my PGA Tour t-shirt and then uh, my Raf Stone ESO hoodie. So Bibby is a walking advertisement, by the way. If you if I you am, want I your am. brand to appear on Bibby, <laughs> then then just send it in. Send it in. Mr. T sent in the PGA T-shirt. Pow! There he goes. Uh, the lovely insert coin people give him an insert coin hoodie. Pow! There it goes. Astro headset. Pow! That that wave mic. You want Pow! to buy my opinion? <laughs> feel free to send me a T-shirt. <laughs> true, in size fat, please. True though. True though, <laughs> he said. It says, true, it, says it, it says it as a joke. It's it's true. It's true. We we like your brand. If you're giving us free things, no, I'm joking. We don't do that. Um, <laughs> or, or do we? Or do we? I don't know now. Am I am I double bluffing? Anyway, let's move ahead. Uh, Bibby ready for any possible comeback uh, to the series. Uh, st- uh, still game with that fetching combat. I don't. I don't. What's what's still game? I don't know what still game is. You you never seen still game. Maybe if someone Good sends morning, someone yes. send me a picture in the chat or a link or something so I can see it because I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I probably will remember, but I can't. I can't. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a TV show that was based in Scotland about uh, a group of pensioners, and it's genuinely like one of the funniest TV series that's ever been ever. Uh, Amazing. I cannot remember it. I cannot remember it. Someone give me a link. I'll probably see it and be like, oh, oh yeah, there you go. Uh, but I don't remember. First things first, though. Gagad. Good morning. How did you get on with your 11K Steps walk yesterday? And thank you for the seven-month subscription. Good morning, gents. Uh, Gagad, if you want to drop your link in the chat, please feel free to do so. No pressure on anyone else, by the way. Uh, but Gagad told me that he was going for a stroll yesterday. And I was like, oh, where are you going? Uh, turns out he's doing something for charity. Um, I, I is it Was it prostate cancer? awareness uh our research uh anyway I, I dropped a little bit of a dodo on on gagad yesterday so if, if anyone else just feels like doing something for charity then feel free to do that but you don't have to you don't have to it's just it's entirely your decision um but but thank you for the sub gag i appreciate it uh return of the maxes hey up northern lads now they're our kid hey up hey up cocker uh more blue than bibby hey. <laughs> can i have a mi- mr whippy please graham uh yeah do you want do you want sprinkles do you want any 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 juice or anything <laughs> I may or may not be watching the Champions League draw and City are the first team out of the cup, uh, out of the out of the ball. Here we go, here we go, boys. Who are we getting? Oh. oh shit! It's gonna be Liverpool in it as well. Oh, he's opening it. Oh my god! Please be Porto. Please be Porto. Dortmund. Ooh. I tell you what. That's that's probably one of the kind of draws, but City only get good uh, easy draws in the Champions League and in cup games because they never play good teams in cup games. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's very true. It's not true. <sighs> uh, I mean, I've I've seen City get slapped by Real Madrid at the Etihad, so you know there is that. There is that. Um, <sighs> Uh, okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Chat, chat, chat's moving. Chat's moving. Uh, uh, get free advertising every year thanks to that PGA box in the back. Well, there is that too as well. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, Sega don't even know how much they're getting out of him here. Um, and... talking about, mate. Oasis is still paying me royalties. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, Bibby asked them, "Are you going to pay me?" And then they said, "I said maybe." <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll jump into the split screen. Uh, has anyone got any crickets chirping? <laughs> like one of them audio cues. <laughs> uh, Tito says, I'm posting a tutu as we speak. Don't do that! <laughs> no! Yeah. Um, the only thing missing is some fake tattoos with a company on it. Yeah, well, I don't know about You've not seen my new forehead tattoo sponsored by 888poker.com or something like that. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't they do that? Someone actually got like some form of betting thing tattooed on their forehead. It was like like some. I want I I want to say someone that probably appeared on bum fights or something like some some person that could easily be taken advantage of kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that suddenly got very deep. Let's move past that. I remember that, <laughs> uh, but I can't remember what it's called. Uh, okay, let me see. Nope, this this completely passed me by. Still game. No idea. It's, it's literally like ten years old, if not longer. But you, I can't, I can't believe you've never. It's, it's on Netflix. If you've not watched Still Game, please go onto Netflix and watch it. It's like ten seasons. There's only like six episodes in each one because it's obviously British comedy. Um, but it is unbelievably funny. Unbelievable. I mean, the Scottish accent is absolute jokes anyway. Like anything that they say will make me piss myself. Um, Liverpool have got Real Madrid. <laughs> love to oh, see it. this is fantastic. 
<laughs> oh, that's made my day. Uh, the thing is, though, 10 years ago, I had just been, I was one year into the shell shock that is parenthood, so I didn't watch anything 10 years ago, so that's probably why it passed me by. Uh, Gagad said, managed it fine, how was yours? Uh, yeah, it was It was decent, we went um, for a stroll to Starbucks, but by the time I got there, it was like mega late, um, and I'm in that kind of phase where I just lay in bed at night and go, oh, I'm just going to look at my phone for 12 hours, and it's 4am, shit, I need to get up in, in a few hours, so I should try to go to sleep, so I decided to just get a decaf coffee, um, When you, but when you get a flat white, which is basically a stronger latte, and you get that decaf, it, it's just, no, it, it's just kind of, it just, it just wasn't good enough, it wasn't good enough, so yeah, the what was nice, the coffee, not, not as much. So you, you got me into them. What flat whites? You got me, yeah. And now I have them like it uh, for my cost. My what's it called Tassimo machine. Um, you can get the Costa ones, can't you? And the two out of the three boxes that that you can get for like three for a tenner. Two of them are always flat whites. Lovely, lovely. Can't beat your flat white. It's good. It's good. It's basically a latte with extra strength coffee and less of the milk, so you don't feel as bloaty afterwards. You just you're absolutely buzzing off your tits, but without feeling bored. It's lovely. <laughs> uh, carrying on, uh, what's the Champions League? Says Gary. No idea. It's it's about it's about the U- Europa League, <laughs> as Mister T said. It's all about the Europa League. Cries. Yeah. Well, at least we're at least we're in it. Um, how how's how's Spurs getting on? Any Spurs fans in the chat? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm not laughing. You're laughing. I'm not laughing. Uh, Bonsai! Bonsai! Do you, you know see what? Joe posted something on? Oh, sorry, I, I was I was waffling and then stopped because yeah. I was talking over you. <laughs> Go on, continue. Joe Hart posted on his Instagram account yesterday, job done, even though they got beat 3-0 because he thought they went through. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just sat in the stands, just not paying, not giving a shit. <laughs> Nailed it, mate. <laughs> Uh, that's that's not how it works. That's not how the football <laughs> works. It's one of those like automated schedule tweets kind of thingy. Uh, unlucky, unlucky. Uh, welcome in though, Bonsai. Welcome in. Uh, Tito says we was reading some Japanese sushi company has said that they'd give free sushi to people with the name Salmon. Uh, the Japanese government has asked people to stop wasting their time as they've been in- inundated with name changes. Apparently, it costs four four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, hi, man. My name is Salmon. Salmon. <laughs> This is my son, Salmon Salmon. My wife, Salmon Salmon. <laughs> All of the salmons. Yeah. Salmon fish, salmon. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, Bibi, look, look for Jacob's brand Tassimo pods. Th- uh, those taste so much nicer. The Jacob's one are really good, actually. Which ones did that? I mean, do not get the... There's, there's a standard coffee brand. I want to say something like Kenko or something like that. Don't bother. Yeah, that shit. Yeah, just, just, just... Crap! It's like it's like it getting a coffee machine. And the law and the then, ones that I get. Yeah, the law ones are decent as well. Um, but yeah, the other ones are like, uh, it's yeah, just like getting a tassel machine and then just making yourself an instant coffee anyway. It's not quite the same. But the Jacobs one are really good. I agree. I agree. Um, although I haven't had a Tassimo for ages because my Tassimo machine uh, is at work and we've not been to work for a year now. So there you go. Well, pretty <laughs> That's much. Be when we get back. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, all about that fresh ground coffee. Do you know? What? I absolutely love the idea of it. It's just it's just the the time kind of thing. So, can you even see it? No, you can't see it. I have I have one of the Russell Hobbs one cup coffee machines, which is basically a filter coffee machine. Um, sat right there. Uh, they those are incredibly good. So you, it's it's kind of like this, old school people will know what a tea's made is. A tea's made was basically an alarm clock that had a coffee machine, a, a, a tea machine attached to it. You set your alarm for six o'clock in the morning. It wakes you up and makes you a brew. Turns on a light and everything, um, which kind of like was it, it was one of those like super old things where it's like let's do all the things at once and then it became like why would you want all of that stuff and now we're coming back into those times where it's like i want to control everything with my phone i want it all done for me anyway so they're now kind of coming cool again anyway uh russell hobbs do a one cup coffee machine that does exactly that so as like you set it for six o'clock in the morning or 12 noon or whatever you just put all your bits in all your water in all your coffee in and you just leave it there and then uh, thing in the morning you fresh well if mm. you've got fresh ground coffee um then that works if not you can just use normal uh ground coffee just stick it all in jobs are good and make some uh sexy coffees bosh i've scared the shit out of myself a few times i've set it all up for like 12 30 started streaming and then just heard like 
what sounds like someone peeing into a cup behind me. I was like, what the fuck is that? And it's the coffee machine just working its way through. But, <laughs> but yeah, really good. Fresh, fresh coffee is good. Fresh coffee is good. Um, the downside with with having something like a one cup coffee machine like that is if you have milk in your coffee, which I do, I like a bit of cream or milk in my coffee. If you're leaving it overnight, yeah, I'm not sure about that. So I have to use like coffee mate, coffee creamery kind of things in it, but they're not too bad if you get some decent ones. So yeah, sugar, <laughs> coffee, creamer, bosh, job's good. Anyway, enough of the coffin talk. Uh, we spoke about coffee, we spoke about football, so we're not even going to ask what you got up to last night, babe, because, you know, uh, we've got video games. Stuff Wasting to time. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's jump into the news uh, for today. Uh, loading it up, loading it up, uh, turn in the sources, and dice. Okay, I genuinely thought I clicked on the wrong article then, because it's got a Fortnite header. I was like, what? <laughs> this is not in the news today, but this is uh, Next Gen VR on the PS5. The new yeah. controller on VAR. Yes, exactly. Video assistant, virtual reality referee. Uh, oh, I'm going to take this off screen because Bibby's just full on acted his way through that and you didn't get to see the benefit. Do it again, Bib. <laughs> no, I can't. It was a one-time deal, Graham. <laughs> That's the benefits of being live. Do you know, I'm not even going to explain what it was. If you didn't see it, you missed out. and You, mi- you didn't see it, so you missed out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but Next Gen V, no, A, R, ah, on the PS5, the new controller. This is from the PlayStation blog, and I believe was submitted to us by one of our own. He's one of our own. He's one of our own. Garlic Clark, he's one of our own. Uh, Mr. Gary Clark in the chat submitted this on the Discord yesterday. Uh, These weird-looking things, but interesting-looking things, have been revealed yesterday. And these are Sony PSVR's new controller. This is for PSVR 2 anyway. Let's jump into this. Uh, Stronger immersion with adaptive uh, triggers, haptic feedback, finger touch detection, and more. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. So PSVR has been out for a while. It's a PS4 uh, platform that has been uh, improved to work better with PS5. Um, And now they're taking it to the next level with the next PSVR. PSVR 2, we'll call it that. I don't know if that's its official official name, but now there are controllers. So before there was the move light sticks with a little uh, glowing ball on the end, which which was fine enough. It kind of did a job. It wasn't as good as other VR things out there, but it did the job. These are building on that. But the bit I want to ask about is the first bit that I've just read says stronger immersion with adaptive triggers. Forget the PS5 uh, VR bit for now. Adaptive triggers. What is mm-hmm. what are the chances that we have a verbal description of how the adaptive triggers can be used that doesn't uh. include a bow and arrow. We've mentioned this every time we've spoken about this. Is he, is he going to mention a bow and arrow or is he going to find another way of describing how they can be used? Don't get me wrong. I, I like the adaptive triggers when when they're used uh, cleverly. They just, we just haven't had anything in press releases beyond. It, it simulates pulling the string back on a bow with a bow and arrow. Uh, we need everyone get ready in the chat if it mentions it in the article. I've not actually read through it. It probably doesn't. Uh, so I'm probably building this up for a, a like a like crickets as Bibby's already done. Like that. <laughs> like, like, <yeah>. but, <laughs> but anyway, let's jump in. We'll, we'll read through. Uh, Hideaki Nishino, the Senior Vice President of Platform Planning and Management at the Sony PlayStation blog, uh, writes this article. Following the recent reveal of our next-gen virtual reality system for PS5, I'm excited to unveil more details about the new controller that will play a critical role in providing gamers with the VR experience we're working to deliver. Our new VR controller speaks to our mission of achieving a much deeper sense of presence and stronger feeling of immersion in VR experiences. It will build upon the innovation we introduced with the DualSense wireless controller, which changed how games feel on PS5 by unlocking a new way to tap into the sense of touch. Now we're bringing that innovation to VR gaming. Design. The first thing you'll notice with our next-gen VR controller is the unique design, which takes on an orb shape that allows you to hold the controller naturally while playing with a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints with how you're moving your hands, providing developers with the ability to create unique gameplay experiences. We also designed the new controller with great ergonomics in mind, so it's well-balanced and comfortable to hold in each of your hands. We applied learning from testing users with a range of hand sizes, as well as the decades of insights from the controllers across all PlayStation platforms. The result is an iconic design that will change how VR games are played. It does actually look pretty snazzy. That top image Mm -hmm. doesn't do a great job of selling it, in my opinion. These ones look quite nice. Um, Features! 
Uh, the new VR controller enables players to feel and interact with games in a much more visceral way. Points for the use of the word visceral. Uh, there are several features, including key features from the DualSense controller, which match our vision for what next generation VR games can be. Adaptive triggers. Each VR controller, left and right, includes an adaptive trigger button that adds palpable tension when pressed, similar to what's found in the DualSense controller. If you've played a PS5 game, you'll be familiar with the tension... <laughs> you'll be familiar uh, with the tension in the L2 or R2 buttons when you press them, such as when you're drawing your bow to fire an arrow. Oh, one second, one second. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway... Okay, Usa, calm down. Get back in the room, dude. Um, <laughs> when you take that kind of mechanic and apply it to VR, the experience is amplified to the next level. Okay, okay. As much as a, as a mock that, um, the the adaptive triggers can be good, and if you, I do genuinely feel that that in a VR environment could be good, so okay. Okay, I won't give you any more impressions and stuff now. I just felt because I took the piss, I had to balance it. Um, haptic feedback. Mm -hmm. The new controller will have haptic feedback optimized for its form factor, making every sensation in the game world more impactful, textured, and nuanced. When you're traversing through rocky desert or trading blows in melee combat, you'll feel the difference, magnifying the extraordinary visual and audio experience that's so central to VR. Finger touch detection. Uh, the controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the areas where you place your thumb in index or middle fingers uh, this enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay tracking uh, the vr controller is tracked by the new vr headset through a tracking ring across the bottom of the controller um, action buttons and analog sticks the left controller uh, contains one analog stick the triangle and square buttons a grip button l1 um Trigger button, L2, and create button. Uh, the right controller contains one analog stick. The cross and circle buttons, I think they mean X and circle buttons. Uh, a grip button, R1. Trigger button, R2. And options button. Uh, the grip button can be used to pick up in-game objects as one example. SIE's product engineering and design teams have collaborated to build our new VR controller from the ground up with the goal of making a huge leap from current gen VR gaming. We're thrilled with the controller we developed, but what matters now is how game creators will take advantage of the features to design the next generation of VR experiences. Prototypes of our new VR controller will be in the hands of the development community soon, and we can't wait to see what ideas they come up with and how the controller helps bring their imagination to life. There's still so uh, there's still much to share about the next generation of VR on PS5. On behalf of all of us at SIE, I want to thank you all for taking this journey with us, with your bow that you pull back and feel with the haptic mm -hmm. triggers. But uh, interesting, interesting, Bib. Mm -hmm. Next gen yes. VR on the PS5. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the PSVR on PlayStation Four, albeit it was a very very good piece of kit. We had a lot of games to be able to use, so there were some fantastic games that particularly wasn't made for VR that turned up uh, that ended up being made into VR games down the line. Obviously, the likes of Resident Evil Seven was a survival horror game, and then if the VR capabilities got tacked onto it, and then we ended up with a fantastic immersive experience. Then we had things like back uh, uh, the Batman game. I can't remember. Was it just like it's just Batman where you could like get into the suit, and then you had obviously Iron Man VR, which is quite recent. So they have had some decent enough games come through. I do feel like the 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 hardware let them down. I don't want to say that it let them down. It, it it I don't think it did. What what we're trying to say here, Graham? <laughs> I think they probably reached the ceiling on the PlayStation 4 with the particular kit that they was using because the move controllers was from the PlayStation 3, right? Yeah. That got, then got used with the PS4 headset. So I feel like they've reached the ceiling with that particular piece of kit. The headset compared to what was available on the market from other brands wasn't anywhere close to being as powerful as, again, the other brands that was on the market. So having a new set of equipment because i think the new p ps vr headset is going to be 1080 in both eyes because i think it was it was just shot at 1080 on the ps4 headset right no i think i think it was i think it was 1080 but split so you you essentially got half 1080 in one eye half 1080 in, in the other did they not well, I, I seem to think it was going to be 4k but i can't quite remember yeah 
So, I mean, this is going to be like a, a massive step in the right direction for them in terms of competing with other brands on the market because the PS4 headset, the games that can still come out for them are still fantastic. There's no, it's still an immersive experience. I just don't think it's as good as the ones on the market. However, with getting huge inspiration from uh, the Oculus with the with the controller i think that is probably the biggest change that they could potentially have the haptic feedback is okay to a degree i do like the feeling of the haptic feedback but i'm going to be honest like on borderlands 3 where i'm constantly firing the gun i had to turn it off because it was sending me under like my hands felt like when i even when i finished the game i had to put the controller down my hands are still my hands are still vibrating so i had to turn so, it sorry, off what were your hands doing sorry Again, it's a one-time deal, Greg. <laughs> a one-time deal. Again, if you watch it, if you listen to this on audio, uh, an audio form, then you're missing out the whole experience. But um, I, I do like the haptic feedback to degree, especially like the main example that they always use, and you mentioned it before, and the bow and arrow stuff. I think that that's okay because you're not constantly doing it. But if you're firing guns and that, it it's weird. Like I don't like the feeling for a, an excessive period of time. Uh, but I, I could just be one of the the, the small minority that I don't no, like that. No, I, I agree. I agree. Like even just using uh, the example that was on screen at the top of this article. Uh, there's the article again. Ta-da! Fortnite. So I was uh, smashing through Fortnite um, at the end of last week to get from like level 40 to level 100. I had to do all of the missions. So it was basically long stints of playing Fortnite. Um, not too bad if you've got assault rifles. You just pull the trigger down. Jobs are good. Enough. But if you've got a burst rifle and you have to keep pulling the trigger down, um, by the end of it, I felt like my finger had been stretched to the point where my joint was aching a bit on my finger because you you just it's you're having to like it's like trying to do pull ups on the tips of your fingers. You're just overstretching the joints in the middle, and sometimes like if you if you just trigger 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 okay mm. i've killed him you run on next fight trigger 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 oh f- f- killed him next fight oh, actually i need to do some building uh, and then use all of your triggers and you use that same finger again it suddenly just becomes to the point where you're just like oh, my, my finger is just tired now yeah so it is good it is good it's I'd... the extra squeeze as well yeah yeah it's... like on the haptic it, it's it, it's not just like a, a normal trigger where like i'm obviously not playing anything now but it's quite easy to it's quite easy to use the triggers on that, but the forced feedback on it, if you're constantly doing it, I don't want to say it hurts because it genuinely doesn't. It just becomes a little bit annoying, shall it's, we say. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like exercise in that sense. Exercise, so if you start doing a couple of uh, push-ups kind of thing, it doesn't hurt. It's fine. It's a piece of piss. And then it, it's mm-hmm. not so much that it hurts. I mean, it does hurt, but it's more like you're exhausting your ability to do it kind of thing. And it's the same thing with haptic triggers because they... They can yeah. add a little bit of strength. It almost feels like you need an option to be able to go, okay, make it a bit softer. Give me the idea of it, of the of the pulling back the bow and other things yeah. that are available that we're never going to tell you about, just just the bow. Mm-hmm. Um, but give it a, a bit softer. Because uh, if not, you're just going to get to the point where you're just going to turn it off completely and it's a function lost then. I can see why in esports tournaments, the, the haptic triggers um, are, go- are turned off because what's smaller than a split second because that's how long it takes to be able to have it without the haptic feedback and be able to pull it and then with it like i can see why they have to turn it off because it again it's less than half a a half a split second like it's just a small an extra little bit of resistance is the difference between uh, (laughs) between killing your opponent or being killed and being taken out of the game so i can absolutely see why it's been turned off for esports tournaments it would get kind of annoying if you are in a gunfight and that it's less than a split. Everyone talks about frames win games. Turning your haptic figures off will win you a game if somebody else is using it. I'm telling you that now because after a while, it'll get a bit repetitive and then you'll you, you'll understand. If you haven't played with a PS5 controller yet and you haven't played in a first-person shooter game yet, you think I'm talking out of my ass. But play that game for an hour and then come back and I say the same thing because it you, you will end up turning it off. It's it, for games like Horizon Zero Dawn, where you're probably using your bow and arrow sparingly compared to a gun. It would be perfect for that. You, that that's the perfect way to be able to use it, and that's probably why they use it as a a point of reference every single time they bring up capture triggers. But having it in a first person shooter game where your gun is constantly going off, uh, it's 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 a little bit annoying. Well, I've got you the counter message. So you got frames win games for uh, uh, frames when it comes to haptic triggers at least in prize pools haptic triggers lose you figures 
<laughs> but you had 500 grand, you've only got That's 20 grand. Really you finished second, mate. Sorry, mate. Unfortunately, because you had Hampton Triggers. I'm lucky. Uh, but yeah, did no. you go with that all by yourself? I did. I did, I did just then. <laughs> I mean, if anyone wants to go back and look at that, you can see a good 30 seconds when I'm sat there going, what rhymes with haptic? Hmm. S- <laughs> slapdick? No, don't want that one. Uh, triggers. <laughs> Figures? Oh, that works! Hey, do 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 and then maybe stop talking and it works. Ta-da! There you go. Nice. That's that's the uh, thought process. Um, but what do you guys think then? Okay, next gen VR on the PS5. What do you think of the new controllers? I mean, I, I know I keep mocking haptic uh, feedback and the triggers, and uh, purely because of that one marketing example. The the best and easiest way to describe what the haptic triggers can be used to show is bow and arrow that's much more simple than than saying when you pull on a bow you feel the resistance get uh, stronger you can do that with a haptic trigger job's good enough. it's easier to say that than go okay when you shoot with a gun um you can feel the bullets uh, as you're getting towards the end of the mag the haptic feedback could let you know that you're getting towards the end of the mag because it's much more uh difficult to pull the trigger you know that you're you're at the end of the magazine um just like in real life, if you were shooting a gun that had a full magazine, by the time you got to the end of the magazine, you've lost a lot of weight in that gun, so you'll realise as well that, that there's mm-hmm. no bullets in. So it's kind, of, it's kind of useful in that sort of sense, but it's much harder to describe. So I understand why they just go with that that one example. But for me, at this point, I'm like 18 months have just been given this bow and arrow example because you start a talk, why is it 18 months when they first start talking about the, the controller maybe 12 months whatever it is that's the only example that gets used in every press release give me something new find a new way to talk about it um but we saw the controller for like three months before the console came out yeah so well there you go so it's probably within the last well definitely took last 12 months then um so but even still 12 months of just having that one um little bit of information about about the feedback and from the triggers i just i it kind of waters it down. The adaptive triggers, they're meant to adapt. They're meant to be adaptive. Adaptive means Mm -hmm. it can work in multiple situations. So why do we only get one situation where they work? Anyway, beyond that, um, I agree with some of the uh, sentiment in the chat. Um, uh, Where where was it? Where was it? Someone said something about the controller being good. Um, I can't. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. Uh, Hmm. Maybe it's further up. Scrolling, <laughs> scrolling. Um, okay, I can't find the bit about the uh, the controller. Maybe nobody said it. Maybe I just made it up. But the, I do like the Dual Sense controller. <laughs> I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. I like uh, the technology in it. I genuinely believe that is a next gen controller. Not nothing else in the market has taken a step forward like that. Is is it perfect? No. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not even factoring in obviously drift potential. But that's nothing new. If anyone says it is, then they've clearly not been reading up um so yeah i like the controller and i'm just being a bit harsh to it when i'm when i'm talking about the adaptive triggers and stuff like that so so take that with a pinch i do like the controller i mean i've got one sat right there and i happily use it all the time so um i don't want to look like i'm shitting on the controller as for the uh the next gen vr controllers um let me jump back again. I'm going to actually, do you know, I'll go through all of the chat just so we can catch up. Because uh, some of the comments in there I want to read, but rather than trying to pick that one out, we might as well go through them all. Um, City will play Bayern or PSG if they get past uh, BVB. That's pretty pretty tricky. Erling Haaland and then Mbappe mm-hmm. or Bayern. Uh, that's, that's, you know, City always gets such an easy route through knockout stages of tournaments. God, God. All right. Haaland's going to come knock us out of the cup and then we'll just pay 120 mil and buy him next summer. It's fine. Nah, he's going to knock you it's out on, on the way past back to the airport. He's just going to pop off into Old Trafford. See you, Uncle <laughs> Ollie. Yeah, job's a good one. Yeah. Um, uh, that's so old school. I want a bacon tease made. Wake up to the smell of freshly cooked bacon. Imagine that. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. I mean, you'll probably have to leave the bacon out overnight, which could be a little bit of a danger, danger slice in the morning, but... It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take it that off. risk. I'll take that risk. Um, mm-hmm. Looks like a glove a superhero or villain would wear. It does look like a glove a, uh, a superhero or villain would wear. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, especially <laughs> in that image. Um, uh, it looks like the Sony Ericsson logo, says Mr. T. Do you know what? I found uh, a tweet that I saw yesterday. Uh, is it still here somewhere? No. It was like uh, PS5 only. 
uh, tweeted it. It was probably being tweeted by a bunch of accounts as well, to be fair, but PS5 only tweeted it yesterday. My God, they tweet so much stuff. There we go. Uh, so they, yeah, visualizing what Mr. T just mentioned. Sony went full circle, okay? So back in the day, that's the Sony Ericsson logo, and now today... Uh, that's the PSVR controller. Spot the difference. It's the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, but, yeah, I don't mind the way it looks. I don't mind uh, all of the description for it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I wonder if they have 59 cables coming out of them. Hopefully it's wireless. Uh, Graham's made a morning drinking game out of the bow and arrow thing. Exactly. Like, no, not even just a morning. We can, it can be an evening thing. Next time there's a state of play, uh, get yourself... Uh, a bottle of your choice, just pop it to the side of you. Not your normal drink, have yourself a brew or a beer or whatever, but then you have a bottle of the strong stuff sat to the side. Every time they mention bow and arrow with haptic triggers, you down the bottle, that's it. Yeah. yeah. 12 people yeah. died watching ice cream uploads on stream today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, looks like they're wireless. If so, probably last five minutes before you have to recharge. Lol, I hope not. Um Basically followed the Oculus design. Fair though, best overall VR set on the, on the market. Why not take inspiration? I agree. I agree. The thing is as well is anyone that had a DS4, a Dual Shock 4, the PS4 controller and the PS5 controller, you will notice that your PS5 controller does not last anywhere near as long as your PS4 controller did. It still lasts a good chunk of time, but I have to charge mine so much more often than I had to charge my PS4 controller. So that kind of makes you think... If there's that much software in uh, and hardware in a PS5 controller, um, the PS5 VR controller surely will will last even less time because its 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 form factor is thinner, so it can't have as much battery space in it surely. Um, but there's a lot more technology in there. There's tracking functions and everything on it, um, so you kind of feel like. How long is that going to last? I mean, that's that's my main concern with it is 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 the battery life. Mm. Is it going to be something that just gets absolutely sapped? Because if it is wireless, which obviously Mr. T has mentioned, it does look wireless. There's no wires shown in the pictures. Um, there is one port at the bottom. For, if I look at this picture, which uh, I assume is a USB-C cable uh, port. Is the image going to come up? There you go. So I assume that is a USB-C cable hole if it's not then that's absolutely bizarre why would you not stick with the same pot let's assume it is um so i assume that is the only cable and that's for charging and, and the likes and pairing um so yeah i would assume wireless but then that does bring me back to is it how how long is it gonna last for i i do have worries in terms of that that said you're not supposed to play vr for 12 hours Wait, what is the average length of time that people play it for uh, yeah, you said that. I think there's a massive delay between us again. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. There is. Uh, let me just put the article back on screen, and we'll kill Bib. I'll read. Hello. There we go. He's back. Okay, I'll go back on screen. Nice. Um, yeah, that's the thing. You're not supposed to play VR for more than I think it's something very, very small. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like less than an hour, 45 minutes at a time or something. Or if it's not that, it's, it's four hours. But I don't think it's four hours. Um, so you're not supposed to play it for that much anyway. So maybe that's it. Maybe they say, well, it only lasts you so long because you're not supposed to play it for hours on end. But that said, if I pick up my VR headset, put it on, put my haptic uh, controllers and stuff in my hands and I'm loading up a game of Call of Duty, then I, I'm going to be there for six hours. <laughs> so so unless until I throw up yeah. all over my VR yeah. headset. <laughs> Um, I do. I do agree. Uh, booted a few things, and it all seemed to pick up. Let me see what I'm actually on. I'm going to do a speed test live on the internet now. Right, uh, speed test. I usually get about seventy meg to eighty meg. Usually about seventy five, and I'm currently on sixty two, sixty three. What? What? So why are you flopping out? That's plenty. Okay, <laughs> we're dropping down. Fifty seven, fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight. Okay, seems like seems like my local network isn't strong. Seems like it's fluctuating. That's why we keep losing bibbies uh, and getting a bit of delay. But anyway, are we back now? I'm assuming you guys can all hear us now again. Nice, right? Good, lovely. Good yeah. gumdrops. Is it? Is it? We'll assume it is. It is. Um, okay, I will carry on. Jump. Yes, nice. I'll jump back through the chat. Um, morning, gents. Says Plum Rico. Good morning, Plum Rico. I'll read. Um, 
I did see Plum Rico's earlier comment. That cramp kicking in again, Bibby, but that was when Bibby was doing his hand wavy movement stuff. If you weren't here mm. for the ESO stream the other day, then you're missing out. Um, the old wanker's cramp. Hey, yay. Um, they look like someone cut the ends off one of those tops that have thumb holes in the sleeves. <laughs> it does look like that. Mega sized sleeves, though. Um, uh, I hope the battery is decent um, in them as if going by the dual sense will be charging them frequently. Oh, there you go. I didn't even need to mention it. Gary's already mentioned it in the chat. Nice. Um, Star Wars Squadrons with VR, I hear, is fantastic, says Madge. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Uh, speaking of Madge, I saw your comment on, was it the Subnautica, like the, the free games stuff as well? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Jumping back off, I know, complete tangent here. Um, you feel free to watch our videos on YouTube, by the way. You don't have to. If you haven't subbed, feel free to go drop a sub on YouTube as well. That's free too. Nice. Um, but Madge dropped a comment on PlayStation giving out 10 free games yesterday. And he summarized it pretty much perfectly. The, the gist was that there's, there's not many like headliner games in there, but they're all pretty solid games. And he, he would rather have 10 solid games that give you something different than one outriders or the similar that that is kind of like a, a bigger game but not necessarily unique uh which is a good good take so thank you for the comment match i appreciate it did see it did see it nice we see all comments that come in um so i appreciate that um yeah the vibration on the dual sense is good but it's not great sometimes it's too much absolutely wreck your hands uh decades from now as we reach pension age we'll have white finger from the haptic feedback triggers exactly uh, i really like the dual sense control but my hand aches uh after a while using it who'd have thought uh, says gary david says who'd have thought uh gamers and miners could have something in common because the most of what you have said sounds like a vibration white finger so how long until gamers end up on the sick because they can't work wow we've got echoes in the chat imagine david you are the same person has anyone seen them in the same room i have so there you go <laughs> um you aren't going mad graham as i said it somewhere above yeah i've just found it just found it just found it then as i read through it um uh but yeah it's fine it's fine we're good anyway uh so ps vr um is getting better there is a new ps vr headset coming there are better controllers coming to uh that system too so you will have more immersive more adaptive uh, controllers that give you more feedback the finger touch detection stuff that sounds pretty cool um so that's that can tell where your fingers are and what you're doing even without pushing a button those three uh, your, your thumb uh your middle finger and your index finger um it can it can tell where all of those three are, which absolutely you 100% know that if this finger, your middle finger, is basically an extension of your your uh, ring finger and, and your little finger, so your hand is like that. In short, your um, PSVR controller absolutely now can sense gun finger, pa pow, pa pow, which is exactly <laughs> all you need for the PS5. Pa pow, pa pow, the gun fingers <laughs> for sure. Um, Okay, we, we have spent a while on this. I do want to move on. But before we do, um, let's talk estimations then. This article was published on March the 18th, 2021 on the PS blog um, by uh, Hideaki Nishino, the vi uh, Senior Vice President um, of Platform Planning and Management. Basically, someone high up that's interested, uh, not interested, involved in uh, delivering these products. We get the news on them early 2021. Do we believe we're going to get to actually use these in 2021? I mean, we've got nothing on when the headset is coming out. It was kind of like it's kind of like a rinse and repeat of last year. We got mm -hmm. to see the controller months before we got to see the console. We're now seeing the controller now months. But I mean, have we seen the new PSVR or did we just hear about it? I can't quite remember. It's all kind of merged into one. We haven't seen it. We 100% haven't seen it because every article that's mentioned it is still using the old one. Hmm. So do we see that coming this year? Is this the holiday release? Is it right to have this as the holiday release when nobody's got a PS5? Um, what, what, what do we well, think? I think? I think the majority of people who want a PS5 will have one by Christmas. There's no way they're going to have a, a, a year's long drought. It's not going to happen. By then, the shot, by then, hopefully, fingers crossed, the world will be... Uh, I don't want to say back to normal, but to a point where you can go into a shop and collect whatever you want rather than having to go into virtual queues to try and get hold of whatever you need. I mean, obviously it is at this moment's part, uh, moment in point of supply and demand. They can't get them out fast enough. As for what That's what we're led to believe. But there isn't... People who want one will have one by Christmas. I, can, uh, I think that's an absolute certainty. 
So with that in mind, then people that want them will have them by Christmas. Is it fair to say that a lot of people that want them will get them for Christmas? Because it's still a five hundred pound purchase. And oh if, yeah. If that it's, it's, it's another console, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If if that is the case, then a PSVR is effectively another console. PSVR's uh, the bundle is about three hundred and fifty quid, when the PS4 is about three hundred and fifty quid. So you're kind of looking at seven hundred quid all in ish. In then, is Christmas twenty twenty one too early? Um, because a lot of people will have had the console, but a lot of people will only be getting the console then. Is this dropping at the same time mm-hmm. as the onboarding of of that ecosystem? Is that too soon? Will that mean that we get it pushed back into next year? Because I, I, that's the thing. I genuinely don't know how, where I'd call this. I mean, I agree with what uh, Gary said in the chat. As my, my knee-jerk reaction, Gary said Christmas 2021. Um, that's where I see. Well, if you're talking about it in March, it's coming out at Christmas. If you if we're not seeing it in March, it's going to get announced at E3 or the like. We'll get the build up, and it'll come out in November ish. So we'll get it in the holiday period. That's what my brain says to me. But I'm thinking that's VR's not got a great install base uh, previously. It's something that we know will be good, but it's not there yet. It still needs to come. So I kind of still feel Christmas 2021. Whilst it looks likely on this, maybe is a bit soon. Um, mm. But is that a case of Sony? Sony just think, oh, fuck it, it is soon anyway. We want to get there before everyone else. Xbox are looking at doing VR stuff potentially if the rumors are anything to go off. Um, Oculus is, is nailing uh, stuff, and the games that they've got on Oculus are so much better than any of the games that are on PSVR and so on. We need to get something out now so that we can start to start to get a foothold in the market and make people want to go with it alongside the PlayStations. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just check the price of PSVR. And for the basic version of it, which is just the headset and the camera, uh, and the PlayStation World, so I think you get like three games with it, the, like the built-in ones, it's still 260 quid. So that's not without the controllers, and that's not without any bundled-in games. So you're probably looking at about four tonne. I reckon just for PSVR a new too, console when it comes out, and then your console. So you're looking at, and then if you want pounds. a game, yeah, you're looking at yeah. If you want a couple of games, you're looking at at least a grand, at least if you want to buy them both. I mean, it's the the blow will be suffered uh, a little bit less for the likes of me and you that have already had our Playstations a year by then. So you could probably stomach paying that out, but yeah, it's it's a lot of money to be able to try and cough up towards Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, uh, which which I mean that's that's what I'm at. I mean it, it might it, they might come out. I mean, what will sell it then as well? Because usually it's a case of okay, if you're going to release something new, like PlayStation Four is a great example of a game of a console that was sold on the back of its software. So you bought the hardware to get the software. You bought the PS4 for the games that we always mention, the Gods of Wars, the Spider-Mans, The Last of Us, uh, Horizons, and all of those titles that were just hit after hit after hit, Uncharted as well. You bought PS4 to play those games. Why would you buy the PSVR? Um, mm-hmm. For PlayStation Worlds that came out on the last gen? Naturally, there's going to be... Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, well, that's it. I'll buy one now. Where's it's not the... backwards compatible, though, on it. Well, that's 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 the next question. I mean, I wasn't even getting into that. I was I was going more to. I did mention Oculus and the games that they have. The game I had in mind uh, was Half Life Alex. Um, mm-hmm. Probably the best game for VR out there um, across the board. Um, could we see that coming to PSVR? Is PlayStation putting it out now? Is that a result of okay things like Half Life Alex have had their their time to shine on PC and they've sold a lot of hardware off the back of Half Life Alex? Will that now come to PlayStation? Will PlayStation has the exclusive period finished for Valve and they've gone okay PlayStation you can have it now we've done what we want could that come with it? Um, and if that is the case, I mean PlayStation could be working on their own titles. Well, will be working on their own titles, but will they be that big? Um, and then the next bit, as Bibby just mentioned. Does PlayStation Worlds work on it? Can you play London Heist um, and anything else on the PSVR 2 that came out on the PSVR 1? My instant reaction is no, because it's not like plugging in a a PS3 controller to a PS4 where you can just map L1 is the same as L1, L2 Mm -hmm. is the same as L2. That's a completely different 
computation system. The way it computes all of the movements and stuff will be different from having a light stick. So I, 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 I'm not convinced that the games will be backwards compatible. I mean, I could be. I don't know anything about that. I, I think they will. I think they'll be dumb not to do that with the with the massive push on backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5 to PlayStation 4 with the library of games that they had for that and Xbox knocking it out of the park at every single opportunity when it comes to backwards compatibility, I think they'll be dumb to not at least try and try and make it a thing. I don't think it's a I case think... of being dumb, though. I mean, I, I agree. I completely agree with what you're saying in that sense. It's just... like if The if, buttons on the front of the same. If on going the front, from on the PS3 the to a PS4 was difficult because the PS3 was an absolute shit show of a system. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of feel like there's more variables in a VR. Like I said, I could be wrong. I could just be like, oh, yeah, no. They could be like, yeah, I'll work. Um, I just feel like we've with the precedence that we've had with changing from one system to another, um, I, can't, I, I kind of feel like this could be another one where Sony goes, yeah, it's not all backwards compatible. You know the how... Half-Life Alex that you mentioned, I know that you had to have the Val well, Valve Index came out at the same time, I think, and that was the one where you could put your fingers into it and your fingers, uh, if you did this, it would replicate it in the game. Could you play that game without that? I'm fairly certain you could because that would make no sense because that was like a £1,200 piece of kit. Um, I but think so. I like think those so. kind I of think games, just like I hope a, you had to bottom up with that. I think it was more like an Xbox better on xbox one x i think it's kind of like that sort of conversation better yeah. on the valve index kind of thing can you imagine though like we mentioned yesterday with the vr stuff for xbox can you imagine if they said okay all the uh all the peripherals that you've been using on your pc if you didn't own a pc if you went out and buy it is now available to be used on your xbox can you imagine like that would be i think one of the biggest mic drop moments that xbox could have this generation Absolutely. Well, imagine that i've not even considered that like playstation like yep yeah, you can buy our purpose-built PSVR uh, headset, and you're like, oh, that's purpose-built. Uh, built? That's wonderful. I mean, it's literally built for this system. Great. Nice. And then Xbox goes, oh, you've already got one that costs you twice as much as that and is much, much better, and it has hand, like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, just plug that in. Job's good. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> suddenly, yeah. our purpose-built 400-quid extension, which is half as good, suddenly doesn't, doesn't cut the mustard. That would be, yeah, imagine. Well even better still obviously we like for me i've got my little studio in the spare bedroom in my house i've got my pc tower i've got my console being able to move if i had an xbox series x downstairs into the front room where there is so much more room to be able to do vr stuff it just opens so many more possibilities up rather than having to take my pc tower unplug everything move it downstairs plug it all back in hdmi cable to the big tv keyboard mouse blur if you could use all of those VR peripherals, like the Valve Index, the HTC, whatever the fuck it's called, and the Oculus, just plugging it into the front of my Xbox Series X, that is console winning generation shit right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh... Do you know what? We will see. We will see what happens. We'll put a pin in this article for now. Uh, the summary is... Next gen VR on PS5 continues to look a little bit more attractive. PS uh, PSVR on the PS4 is nice. It's good. It's 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 not perfect. I'm not going to say it is. It, you can have some some fun with it, definitely, but it's not the fully rounded experience that everyone wants, uh, which kind of shows in, in the uptake. Also, there's not as many games in it, which kind of shows in reason why for the uptake. But uh, PSVR 2 does look like a much more enticing uh, proposition. How Xbox will react to that? Will Xbox react to that? We will let you know as yeah. more news comes. But for now, we'll jump into something more uh something else something different actually i say something different if we are going to find out that there is going to be uh more advancements in the world of psvr or xbox vr then gamescom might be a place where we find that news which is interesting because that's exactly where we jump to now as tom ivan at vgc says gamescom 2021 will be a hybrid event uh, with reduced physical capacity. The show will take place in Cologne from August 25th to 29th. Interesting. Did not see that coming. I genuinely did not see that coming. Um, mm -hmm. I know that um, Germany is, has been hugely successful uh, in, I, I don't want to say across the board, because someone could probably go, actually, no, it's been shit in certain parts dealing with the, with the pandemic and so on. But, but 
I'm using the UK as a barometer. Germany's been fucking exceptional at dealing with the pandemic compared to what our government is. But anyway, that's a different <laughs> conversation for another day. Um, I still didn't expect any physical presence at Gamescom, but that looks to be the case as the show will take place in Cologne from August 25th to 29th. So Gamescom 2021's organisers have announced that they're planning for this year's show to be a hybrid event combining digital elements with on-site events. While Gamescom 2020 was a digital-only event, organisers Köln Messer and the German Games uh, German Game Industry Association game uh, said on Thursday that they intend to welcome fans and industry professionals back for this year's show, which will take place in Cologne from August 25th to August 29th. Gamescom 2021 will feature an entertainment area designed to host a reduced number of on-site visitors compared to previous years. It will operate a digital queue management system designed to safely enable consumers to test out the latest games. It will also include an area for special program items such as eSport competitions and cosplay shows, plus an expanded business area for trade visitors. Uh, the event will once again kick off with Gamescom opening night live, which attracted over 2 million simultaneous viewers in 2020, thanks to Ice Cream Upload's coverage. Oh, it doesn't say that. Sorry, no, my bad. According to the show's organisers, um, quote... In late summer, we are striving to make an on-site Gamescom event possible for the gaming fans again at last. Game Managing Director Felix Falk said, We will hereby be placing a focus on the super fans and the on-site testing of the latest games this year. At the same time, Gamescom 2021 will once again reach millions of people worldwide as a result of the further developed digital offers. Uh, Köln Messer Chief, uh, Chief Operating Officer Oliver Frieser also comment, uh, commented, I am confident that we will be able to offer the visitors as well as the exhibitors of Gamescom 2021 a safe and eventful trade fair experience with our company, Be uh, our concept, hashtag be safe for business, that has already been tested at smaller events. At the same time, we will make use of the experiences we gained in the course of Gamescom 2020 and other trade fairs such as DMX at home, don't know what that is, um, to effectively bring the fans, trade visitors and exhibitors together online for Gamescom 2021. Because one thing is clear, hybrid events will shape the future. I have absolutely no doubt in the final, final uh, closing statement in that article, hybrid events will shape the future. If you mm -hmm. are planning a physical event, you kind of need an online presence. This year has shown mm -hmm. it more than any other thing. I mean, D digital marketers have been switched onto that for quite a long time, but there is still a need within all trades and industries to satisfy this this urge to have a huge financial outlay to appear at a physical event, whereas activating online can be much, much more influential than appearing at yeah. a physical event. Hybrid events are showing that both can be done and should be done alongside that. Um, that said, Gamescom, is it too soon for this? What are your thoughts, Bib? Without knowing the full details of what Germany is going through at this moment in time, I don't think I could comment on that particularly. I agree with you that the the digital aspects of this has been pushed forward, shall we say? Because, like you say, digital marketers um, and industry leaders have been switched on to creating uh, online content. Oh, uh, the, uh, opening Night Live has been there for two years now, maybe three years. So they kind of understand what the people who may not be able because obviously right, two years ago was my very first gamescom apart from that i was watching stuff either online or getting people's feedback from like the likes of ign who used to well well i say used to everyone used to have a booth there uh, but they used to have like a little glass cabinet in the back um which i was very happy of being able to stand outside and just wave at people with them ignoring me blatantly <laughs> inside of the room um but having stuff like this is uh the, it, it, it is the future uh annoyingly I do think that reduced numbers in events will likely be the outcome for any future event rather than trying to cram thousands and thousands of people because it was unbreathable in some places. The amount of people are trying to have a go up escalators, walk upstairs, go into little booths, get in lines. Like it is <clears throat> sweaty, it stinks, uh, and is uh, draining, shall we say, because the days, the days are long as they are hard. And I'm, I know that sounds typical for someone who's going to events like this and people are sat home like, you're getting to play all these different games and stuff like that yeah i absolutely agree I, I was a fan before i went i'm a fan leaving still um but the amount of people until you see it for yourself the amount of people who are being crammed into very small areas it was 
inevitable at some point. I didn't think it'd take a global pandemic for people to be able to go, actually, this doesn't <laughs> seem right, <laughs> having this many people in a very small area. Um, so you can kind of say, I don't want to say it was a good thing that this kind of thing happened, but I, again, I can't believe it's taken a global pandemic to, for this kind of thing to happen. But going forward, I do believe that this will be a better show. I'd like to say the same thing for E3, but I don't think it will. But I think Gamescom will come out of this as a better show for everybody. It means that people who have no opportunity to go to Germany at all will get a better experience at home because of stuff like this. No, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. The fact that people can experience Gamescom remotely is is this how can what's the word for it the silver lining so covid is the gray cloud um at least the silver lining of that is that more people will be able to experience it um remotely I, to, they've been able to do that anyway but to a much larger extent i am surprised though that we will be seeing um a hybrid event in that sort of sense i genuinely expected digital only again yeah, uh, for agreed. this year do do i think is, is that me being presumptuous in a negative sense potentially potentially but I, it's not that i don't feel that that we'll be in a world uh, in a world where things have started to go on 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 the open things like that i, I think it's more the fact that we are what 19th of march um so august what's that five months away five months is is quite a long time but in 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 terms of treating a pandemic five months is not not a very long time at, at all i mean ask people <laughs> Uh, 18 Almost months ago now. yeah exactly. yeah so so five months isn't that that long at all and one of the things that, that countries are not going to rush uh, rush to do is r remove the quarantine elements so at the moment if you leave the uk and go to germany um i believe i could be wrong on the german side of things but i believe you have to sit in a hotel for two weeks uh because you are coming from an area that's potentially at risk and then when you come back to the uk you have to sit in a hotel for two weeks because you're coming outside of the uk control you could be bringing in infections so that's a month of quarantine for every single person that wants to go to this event i mean obviously people that want to attend the event on on the floor that are from within germany which is where a majority of the the visitors will come from that's fine i mean they will all be tested and stuff anyway you kind of hope and all of the natural stuff that comes from being within those areas providing they can freely travel around and so on at that point but i'm not convinced that the uk that uh america that canada that uh any of any, anywhere anywhere across the world developers uh marketers journalists broadcasters content creators whoever it is that goes to these shows i'm not confident that they are going to be able to just freely go there and freely come back which then makes me start thinking if ea have to go and and ea go big anyone that's ever been to gamescom you will see that ea go and they have massive stands for star wars their star wars stand will have a lot of agency staff which are probably local from germany but that star wars stand will have uh, multiple people working on the battle uh, 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 the battlefront teams so there's multiple marketing members from ea multiple developers from ea that will go for that star wars title they will all have a two-week layover uh, before they can then go into the event. So that's extra cost per person. Then they'll have two weeks going back. Potentially, I, I just, I, yeah, I, I don't expect it to be available. I mean, hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. I just, I, I still thought this year in that sense was too soon. Um, mm -hmm. Then again, in South, is it South Africa or New Zealand that they've, I mean, Australia, Australia New people Zealand. Over yeah, that they've started to have full blown thirty thousand people concerts and stuff like that. So it it's not going to be that out of the ordinary. I just think Europe's so far behind the rest of the world in some degree when it comes to stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, it, it does. Does that mean that we that we're going to get local? Like, is I don't think EG is EGX going ahead this year. I don't think it is. Is it? I no. thought they've already said it's not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, which is quite surprising to me because last year I was very, very quick to praise Gamescom whilst also kind of like giving a cut eye look to E3 because um, E3's organizers were like, yep, it's definitely happening. And it was almost that ignorance of it's only a pandemic, whatever, it's fine. People will be fine. Yeah, E3's going ahead. And then fairly late on after Gamescom. So E3 starts in 
early June. Gamescom is mid to late August. So that's all of June, July and August. That's pretty much three months difference there. A quarter of a year difference. And Gamescom came out and said, there's going to be no physical event this year. We're making sure. And it was that swift, bow action. Yeah. Um, but the E3 guys were like, no, it's still going ahead. <laughs> uh, don't ask me yeah. any more questions because you just said it's going ahead. And then all of a sudden, after everyone else had done it, they were like, actually, yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, so the fact that Gamescom was quick to come out with their decision, I mean, I suppose they're quick to come out with, with the decision again this year. That's good to see. But um, yeah, I, I'm still, I still feel like it's, it's probably too soon. We've got vaccines going out. Yes, that's great. So obviously that should lead to a better world. And five months away could be a completely different world. But we're already seeing some issues with supply of vaccines, and 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 is is it rushing the rollout? And and yeah, I I I don't see it being beneficial for a lot of brands. So much so that if brands go, I think it will be triple A's or, or brands that have money uh, to burn, um, that are brands that really want the investment and can take the risk mm. uh, the, the coverage and can take the risk with the investment i think we'd see that um so the brands that maybe are not you not not you not you c or you b titles not your triple a's but maybe the a rating titles that are like actually do you know what we can spend but we don't usually spend and this is a bit of a risk and the amount of money that we're gonna have to spend on staffing backwards and forwards and do you know what let's just let's just create uh, our digital, our Nintendo Direct element, or we'll just put stuff into opening night live, but not actually attend. So yeah, I think it will probably go ahead, but I think it will be very scaled down. There probably will be more fans going than, than industry, because that's where I see my issue. Is not the attendees being fans, but the attendees being industry. A lot of industry professionals will not want to risk it for themselves, and a lot of industry businesses won't want to risk it for their professionals either yeah i know we've got a video game coming out and we've proven over this last 12 months that you can do it from home but do you want to fly to a different country where you have really no uh no control over who or what you can meet nice go get out the door Doosh. i can't see it happening so yeah games come for me i'm not i'm not sure we'll go ahead <laughs> um uh, I think that although it's still hard to get on the PS5, there will be millions out in the wild. If they get a VR out before the masses can buy a PS5, uh, when, uh, whenever, then it will be easier for them logistically and they won't have to make as many straight away. That's a good point. Good point. Yeah. Get, get... Yeah, yeah. Get them in the hands of the people now and then you don't have to worry about supply and demand because there's not that many people who can get them. That does make sense. That does make sense. Uh, they need PS5 only or at least upgraded versions with VR modes only. Uh uh, or slash only VR titles to make it a worthwhile purchase. No, I agree. I agree. The needs the software definitely needs to be there to support the hardware of the PSVR. If you just jumped in now, PSVR um, new controllers was the lead story that we're on with mm -hmm. today. Uh, but back to this one. Surprise that Gamescom will be a hybrid event. Exciting news, and I hope it's able to go ahead without any problems. Gary says, "I'm surprised this is a thing." As according to a few Twitter followers from Germany, the government has been a disaster giving out the vaccination. Oh, really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, on a total guess, it might be limit, uh, limited to German-based people only, uh, potentially. But that mm -hmm. that like that kind of like alienates the industry at that point. So yeah, potentially. Um, it's not just the industry; it's the stands. In how do you mean? If it's just available, if it's just available to German people, what about the people from uh, the the video gaming companies that are trying to you know promote their games? <laughs> like, they, oh, that, yeah, it's yeah. only a. Um, are they just going to get the the German uh, HQs to be able to go on and put them on for them? Yeah, I don't think that'll be the case. I think we were in the same man. That's kind of what I meant when I went uh, by industry. Um, yeah, it's because it, not every brand has a German office. Some brands might operate in Germany. Some brands might not at all. Some brands might have translation mm -hmm. agencies or a local agency that deals with that. Um, there's all sorts of different takes. Uh, yeah, I think that's where it starts to be become why then? Just do it digital if it's only German only. Unless we're talking about like um not industry but but uh, mm -hmm. consumer, then I could see that being the case. I wonder if it will be only German and citizens allowed into the event and everyone else will be doing it remotely. Uh, get out my head. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, that's a hell of a expensive trip for a gaming event, although I thought PAX was expensive. Mr. T says, shouldn't be any events like this until 2022, really. Vaccination in better place globally and less risk in general. Uh, and then Gary, in response to my comment, you went out of the room at this point, so I'm not sure if you uh, heard it, but yeah, EA's area is huge and also ear bleeding loud. So basically saying that 
yes. for, for getting the public, every EA stand will need community teams, marketing teams, some developers for interviews and so on. So every one EA stand could lead to 10 or 20 EA staff that need to be there, not including the local agency staff that they probably hire that are German citizens that can in interact with the audience. There will be usually brand representatives that go along to it as well. Uh, Gary says, EGX is at the moment going ahead. Okay, okay. We will see. We will see on that. Um, but let's jump into our next story. We've got two more stories that we'll uh, quickly go through because I have no idea how long we've been live. I assume it's it's a good old chunk of time uh, because we had the yeah, stream. Yeah, it's about an hour, 10. So uh, this article was provided to us by Lake um, initially, um, although we didn't have an article to discuss uh, yesterday. But 19 hours ago, George Foster at The Gamer did give us an article, so we can jump into that for you now. Um Debug menu accidentally made available uh, through FIFA Ultimate Team's web app. EA accidentally made the Ultimate Team debug menu available through the web app, um, says the tagline. And if you didn't have that enough already with the title and the tagline, let me read you the first line. EA accidentally made the debug menu for FIFA, uh, FIFA Ultimate Team uh, visible for everyone using the web app yesterday. I don't know if you knew that, but there you go. Anyway, allowing players to see kill switches uh, and stats that would previously have gone unseen. Players using the Ultimate Team web app yesterday would have been able to see the debug menu for the system, although a lot of it was standard debug fare. There were several kill switches that caught the eye of Ultimate Team players. Uh, kill switches for terms like pack, odds, low percentage, localization, threshold, dream squad enabled, and enable player traits all raise some eyebrows. Dream squads aren't currently in FIFA, and the implication of enabling uh, player traits implies they can or are disabled. Uh, more options in the debug menu included the options for free coins and free packs, although no one was able to make these work in the time that the debug menu was available. EA has defended some of the kill switches, claiming that low percentage localization threshold is used to find is used to find out uh, the edge for when the pack chances display uh, shows a worth as less than one percent. Although it has since been insisted that no one was able to use these debug menus, one player was able to disable transfer ac access, which they posted on Reddit. EA has defended this by claiming that one player was able to access the com these commands and it only affected their account briefly. Nothing else like this has been reported since, but it indicates that the debug menu had some functionality. EA has since released an official statement on the matter and have denied some of the claims that the debug menu could be used to grant coins or packs. Quote, Earlier today, an issue surfaced during a regular update to our web app. Uh, this ended up causing debug menu tools that are used for internal testing and development to be visible to players. The issue was quickly recognized and has since been fixed. The, uh, though the tools were visible, players couldn't use them to add content or make permanent changes to their own or anyone else's accounts. To be clear, no one was able to receive in-game benefits from this issue, this issue, despite some claims we've seen online. It hasn't been the best week for FIFA News. Uh... Uh, okay, never go. We'll leave that there. Um, so, debug menu accidentally made available through Ultimate Team's web app. A lot of mm. noise, EA says, led to nothing. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Bib? How does this even happen at this point? Like, you and you say it's not been, <laughs> the article states that it's not been a good week for FIFA. It's been probably one of the worst weeks published. Pub, publish, publicly than it's ever been for them like there's just so many things that are coming thick and fast uh to try and you know it's a detriment to them um yeah i don't know like i don't know how this stuff even happens do you like how do you how does people get access to a debug menu like that seems to be coding 101 absolutely bizarre i mean it can happen um obviously all it takes is human error we don't know how uh, how that works. So we could just say it could be hidden behind many, many, uh, many uh, levels of protection, but I don't know, whatever cascading effect has led it to be available in the latest update. Yeah, okay, fine, fair enough. Stuff that people shouldn't have access to, they've got access to it, you've turned it off and it's fine and it's fixed. Usually that's, a, okay, whatever, it's gone. But it's the context, like like Bibi mentioned, like the bit at the end, it's not been a great week. So we've had EA Gate where players have been able to buy uh, the Users have been able to buy players from staff, potentially, allegedly, at EA um, for money. That's on top of the incredible investments that are needed in terms of hours, in terms of minutes, in terms of time to get the players that you desire. Uh, that 
leans into what we spoke about yesterday, Scuds TV, who crunched the numbers and said it's about £80,000 or uh, 70 mm-hmm. days um, or however many other days, 600 days uh, worth of uh, playing for de- various um, modes. So it's either £70 of investment, uh, 70 days of constant without sleep um, using the market or s- uh, 900, 600 days, I think it was actually, of playing the game and just getting uh, your game's rewards. Oh, oh. I'll stop talking. Happy one month to our weird abomination Twitch baby. <laughs> Thank you, Chappers, for the 10 month. Happy one month to our weird abomination Twitch baby. Love you. Love you long time. Thank you very much, <laughs> Chappers. Um, if anyone wants to go and drop Thank Chappers you, a follow, by Shaka. the way, he's a good guy. He joined us on The Scoop a couple of weeks ago, uh, which it was nice to have him on board. But he also streams some Pez and some other bits as well. So go check him out. Go check him out. Uh, thank you very much, Chappers. 10 months. Almost a, almost a year old, our relationship, and only one month for our baby uh, but appreciate it appreciate it so yeah anyway uh, not really much to say on this it, it, ha- it the potential of it sounds like it could be big in reality EA is saying it wasn't that big but it's 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 the meanings and it's it's the little nuances mm-hmm. in it with everything else considered a kill switch that has pack odds low percentage I mean I know it says localization thres- uh, threshold afterwards and and that could mean a million and one things. But when you are having, when you see a switch that says pack odds low percentage, and people think that they're already hard done to, <laughs> that you are mugging them off, and they have to spend ludicrous amounts of money or time uh, playing the game to get something, and pack odds low percentage is an option. That sounds like what the fuck. And then Dream Squad enabled on and off. <laughs> That's like what? That's literally what I want. I want better odds on a Dream Squad, and you have a button to turn them on and off. Why this? I mean, it, that's not what it means, but it's it's just. Do you generally think that there is a button for that? No, I don't. I don't. I believe that these are what they are calling things. I mean, they tried to explain in the article what it means. I didn't really absorb the information. I couldn't quite tell uh, what they were saying. That uh, see. EA has defended some of the kill switches, claiming that low percentage localization threshold is used to find out the edge for when the pack chances display uh, shows a worth as less than 1%. What? So that basically... As in... It gets triggered for certain packs, I think. So like if you was to have a particular icon pack, then it would show the percentage. But if it was just like a normal gold pack, then they probably won't have to because of the different items that are inside it. I, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, it's a, yeah. So if you've got an agent and and it's less than one percent, which I'm assuming is the cut off for if you've got a less than one percent chance of signing something for for clarity reasons, you have to tell people that it's basically throwing your money into a hole. Um, that's what it is. But Packard's low percentage localization threshold could mean a million things, and it's it's just it's it's. It's what people can extrapolate as the meaning away from that. The fact that someone could see pack odds low percentage and it's it's the absolute wrong time to have this stuff leaking out. So yeah, it's it is a bit of something and nothing potentially. Um, but it's it's just it's just another another kick yeah. while they're down. <laughs> yeah. It's just it, it like I say, it's just coming thick and fast uh the the one thing i've always wondered about these pack stuff like obviously this game i don't know the specific figures for how many people play this game on a yearly basis but i'm just going to use a nice round figure of one million people right if they was to release like ten thousand of this particular card is that the limit do they set how many they're going to release into the wild or is it literally just the fact of there could be a million in the back end but not enough people have triggered that card to come out so there could still be like 9000 uh, r9 sat on the system somewhere but enough uh, people haven't opened enough packs to be able to trigger those or is it literally like there isn't enough people playing the game like, i genuinely have no idea how the pack look how the packs how these cards filter through to people's accounts like does would, anyone know that? I don't think anyone does. I would assume, um, from an from my very limited economics perspective, I have done a little bit of a training course in economics from a financial services perspective, so it's not the same as video game economics. But economies are extremely fragile. If you put too much of something into a market, um, mm-hmm. then you can damage the market in many ways. A lot of people go, why don't the back, uh, banks just print more money and give it to people? 
uh, then everyone will have money. But that kind of, it doesn't quite work that way. That has knock-on implications. If more people um, have more money um, and more things are being sold, then uh, there's there's a shitload of demand then effectively and not enough supply. So that could push the price of things up, which could damage markets. And there's all sorts of knock-on effects and stuff like that. So I would see it as they would have a stat that says how many Ronaldo's or Pele's are in the wild from that perspective. And um, the market would kind of be influenced by that. This is how I would work it from a general maths perspective in terms of, okay, we need to know that that we need 10,000 Ronaldo's on the market. If you have one and you quick sell one, that might increase the percentages of Mm -hmm. someone getting one in a pack. That's how I would kind of see it. That said, that doesn't, particularly work entirely because you still should have a chance of being able to get that Ronaldo. They won't have a threshold of mm-hmm. we're not going to go more than 10, uh, 10,000 because that means that it's not available to you in that pack at all, which is illegal. Uh, they can't show you that that player's in mm-hmm. the pack. There still has to be a potential of that going up. But I imagine that stats may change. Um, if there is 10,000 Ronaldos on the market, you might have a 0.1% chance. If suddenly a bunch of them get quick sold or whatever to the back to the computer then your what 0.1% chance might jump up to a 0.8 for a short period of time until the market um stabilizes in that sort of sense that said i don't i think there's probably other levels to it because people still need to keep having the ability to purchase that player over time. We know that packs are extremely difficult to get stuff. A lot of people just buy stuff off markets if they're content creators and so on, uh, because that's the only way you can really guarantee it. Um, but yeah, I would see it as they ha- the stats would probably fluctuate based on the number of them in the markets, because if yeah. not, the economies would, would crash. If everyone had them, then the price of uh, the value of the packs would go down. People wouldn't put money in them. If not enough people had them, then people wouldn't put money in them. You need to kind of have enough to kind of tempt people in, uh, but not enough that it's it breaks it in that sort of sense. So yeah, yeah. video game economic balance is, well, is complex as fuck. Well, like I'd said then, Put it this way, no one packed Prime R9 out of everyone open packs, zero was pulled. I can't imagine how many people would have opened packs and for no one to get them. It's like I genuinely just don't know how the the the, the I know the packs I know how the packs work. You buy a pack, you see what's inside it, but I don't know what the like is it zero point one percent chance of ten thousand players, a hundred thousand players, a million players, or everyone that's playing the game at the current moment at this current moment in time. Like how many are available? to be able to get packed like uh, is the odds of a million people playing it and there's only a hundred available is that worth your time if you knew that would you continue to try and get it is it will that be a holy grail pull that you are one of only a hundred people in the world to have it or is there a million there but they're just not triggering because it's a 0.1 percent chance uh, genuine that that's i think that's why people probably get more pissed than anything because they genuinely have no idea what it is that they're trying to pull all they know is that they're trying to pull a particular player do you know what, am i explaining that correctly no, no, does yeah, that sound yeah that okay and that's where part of the argument comes from in terms of should should the stats always be available at every point in time like is nobody like you you know that you've got a less than a percent chance because that threshold thing that he mentions there comes up and if you've got less than one percent chance of getting players it pops up kind of thing but should they tell you the individual percentages of every single player is the weighting of the players in that pack balanced and that's the thing that you don't really get uh to know like that yeah there might be a thousand players in it and a hundred of them um so ten percent of players in it are icons um but they might weight that then so you instantly think well i've got a ten percent chance of getting an icon no not necessarily that there's 900 players that aren't icons doesn't necessarily mean that that's 90 percent. they could change the weighting of different cards so silver cards will give you you've got a 90 percent chance of getting a silver card and then a five percent chance of uh, gold and whatever so you then down to your 0.0001 one percent chance of getting an icon and then is that evenly split the 100 icons do you have an evenly split chance of getting one of those or do, do those yeah. then get weighted individually depending on their rating? So you, you're more likely to get a 94 and then a bit less likely to get a 95 and a bit less 96 and a bit less 97. So that's the thing. Um, pack odds and pack weighting are two separate elements that can decrease your chances of getting an individual card overall. And that is that is often the thing. A lot of people will think, oh, I've got a black ball player. So I'm going to get, like, this is a Pez now because this is my example. I'm going to get, I've got an equal chance of getting Messi 
I don't actually know how that works, but they could be awaiting uh, to that. Just because you've hit a black ball doesn't necessarily mean that you've got an even chance of getting an 85 player and a 99 player. They could, in theory, be awaiting towards the lower and in, uh, decrease going up. And that's that's the thing. That's where the, the thing about uh, any of these um, blind pack draws is, is that there's not enough transparency when it comes to the, those odds. What does that mean? How... Have I got a 1% chance of getting any player anywhere? Is there waiting towards specific players? Because if I say I've got 1% chance, it's like I've got 100 packs. Uh, if I have 100 packs, I'm I'm, I'm not guaranteed to get, get it just because I've got 1% because that's not how chance works. But yeah. I've got a good chance if I've got 100 packs. But just because you've got a 1% chance of getting an icon, doesn't that could mean I've still got a 0.001 chance of getting Ronaldo or uh, R9 Prime kind of thing. And it's just like, yeah... There's not enough uh, transparency. That's the gist of what I'm saying. A lot of words, but that's the gist of what I'm saying. B basically, I would advise you to not put put stuff into packs if 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 that is the core element of your game. I I don't put too much money into any anything that has any sort of look like that because it is just just a gamble of well I, when I get it. The only time I will put money into stuff like that is if there are specific players that I'm after. Say there's an, a my club update and. Beckham, for example. I've not got Beckham and I really want Beckham or Skulls. I might put eight quid on, knowing full well that there's a good chance that I'm not going to get him for that eight quid because I can I can stomach that loss. That eight quid gone is me losing eight quid. I know it. If I get him, exceptional. But there's a very good chance I'm losing that money. Um, so unless you go in with that mindset, if you've spent that money and you've lost that money, if anything better than that happens, that's the bonus. Because And that, that's kind of... The mindset that you kind of need to go in, which is a shame, which is why I don't like mm -hmm. packs kind of stuff in that sort of sense. Uh, anyway, jump back, jump back to the chat quickly as we move ahead. Um, Bibi Bebe says Chappers. Uh, EA yeah. definitely fix packs, says Ads. See, I don't agree with that. They don't fix packs because uh, that is illegal. That said, um, you can have packs pack look weighted and broken so much that you might as well fix packs so i don't believe that they will fix packs but i do believe that pack weighting um and pack look is so bad as a result of specific reasoning not that it's broken broken would imply that it's not meant to be like that um fixed would imply that it's underhanded and done in a way that's meant to deceive you i don't think it's deceptive but i don't think it's clear and fair and open enough either so i don't think they're fixed but i do th i think they're exactly how they're meant to be but i don't agree with the way that they're meant to be uh, it does seem like it uh, it when it rains it pours for a year though i see keep i say keep kicking boys they might go back to being a good game developer again <laughs> um madge says uh i've sent you a tweet to further fifa ea news interesting interesting do you want to have a look at the tweet bit while i just jump through the uh, comments I put it this way no one no one packed a prime r9 out of everyone open packs none was pulled hashtag fixed uh, but someone did though somewhere right because these guys have bought them like I've seen people with prime Ronaldo that bought them off the market um, I know there's not many of them I'm not not saying it's flawless at all that's not what I'm saying but someone got them somewhere um, so it wasn't fixed in that sense I mean I know, I know a lot of people got them by spending $1,700 as well so that wasn't great but uh, someone did get them somewhere not that it was fixed but that it, the system wasn't good enough for everyone uh, if you get what I'm saying I hope you get what I'm saying um, uh, yeah look at 12 minute video that I won't be able to won't be able to comment on until Monday nah okay, okay. Uh, yeah look at iPhones uh, they only release a certain and limited amount same with printing more money the more you print the less valuable it is for sure uh, I just love how they uh, yet again tell that hey this is just for testing and it's not for real you can go behind that forever apparently also you cannot see exactly what players are in the packs just what card type but they swindle it as black cards not in forms count as special cards uh, limited is count as special cards um, I think we can all agree loot boxes aren't surprise mechanics and should get in the bin. Yes, yes we can, says Lake, and I fully agree. It's always surprised me how many people are arguing that loot boxes aren't gambling because there's no monetary value. The definition of gambling in the US is spending money on something of value, not monetary value. I'd argue no one would bother if the outcome wasn't of value. Um, exactly. Uh, it is value. There is value in it for me. And for a lot of people, there's monetary value. Um, be that actually spending money on the cards as we've seen in the last few weeks but from content creators there is money at stake uh from those as well so i see i i'm firmly in support that i 
believe that any of that in any game, from my personal perspective, is gambling. I do believe that. Um, and I would like to see less of it. I would not necessarily I want to see it stop everywhere because I do believe that some people get their enjoyment from that. Um, and I don't want to be a, a nanny state in telling people that they can't enjoy that content, but I don't feel that that content should be the, the backbone of games that are meant to be full audience games. Um, if people have their own money and are financially secure and healthy in every sense of, of the word, then if that's where you get your fun, fine. The casinos exist for people to have it Amazing nights out. Uh, yes, some people, well, no one goes to casinos mm. anymore, but some people go and, and yeah, they get, they're in a bad way and they, they spend money that they don't have. So there is negatives with that. But overall, the idea of a casino should be fun. Um, and I see I this. Casinos. Yeah, exactly. I, I see that with video games. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to say get rid of them completely because the shit. I'm not going to play them. I don't go to casinos very often. Um, but if I go to a casino, I know that that 100 quid that I'm taking in has been lost. If I come back with more than 100 quid, then results. If I come back without 100 quid, then, oh, I spent 100. I, I spent 100 quid in exchange for a good night. That's that's what I spent it on. Um, so, yeah, it, for me, still gambling, though, um, and I accept that, but some people don't, and and, and it's, there's a time and a place for everything. Um, they bought the for customer support cap, but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I was saying. <laughs> no, only our nines are from the EA em employee who sold them. Uh, but, see, that's... I've heard contrasting messages on that. Unless you've got something proving that, then I'm not... I, I won't take that at face value because I've seen a lot of the ones that were sold as well were untradeable. I won't say all of them because I don't know that for definite, but I, the ones that I saw were untradeable. I, I imagine some probably were, uh, depending on how they were done or whatever. But... But uh, even then, that comes back into the economics thing. If the markets are so stringent that you're only allowed a certain amount of Ronaldos on the market um, and those are given out via dodgy means, then you've broken your economy. Your economy doesn't work because people are paying in to get something that's a resource that's already fully exhausted. This You can't have supply and demand if there is no supply it doesn't work. It's a, it's a, it's a two-sided coin. You can have an offset and have a shitload of supply and no demand or a shitload of demand and no s supply. But as long as there's some supply to keep people going, then then fine. But no no supply at all. It breaks the market. It doesn't work. Um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised by this, says uh, says Magic. No, if you, if anyone's got any evidence of that, that would be useful. Um, I, I'll say again, it's not gambling. You're buying something that has the added bonus that you might get something better than standard. If you don't get better loot, you've not lost. No, I I see I see the element there, um, but the games are weighted to the point that you pretty much get nothing. Um, that getting that silver or that gold, low level gold, is pretty much akin to getting nothing. So I see what you're saying. Uh, I see, but winning three quid on the lottery when you put your quid on, I know that's not the numbers anymore, but I'm old and that's what I remember. Um, if you put a quid on, you can mm. win three quid back by getting three numbers or 10 quid back or whatever it is. 10 quid's still a nice, yeah, that's all right, result. Um, whereas putting your eight quid on and getting a couple of silver players back, you'd rather just have your eight quid. Whereas putting my quid on and getting the bottom win and getting 10 quid, I'm still still up. Um, so it can be akin to being worse off. So I see what you're saying. Technically, it's not in that sort of sense. But, but I think that technicality doesn't sit in that example kind of thing. Uh, ES staff selling items are not tradable, apparently, for, from those shared conversations. Yeah, that's what I, I saw, but um, I don't know. I don't know that for definite. Um, as the audio shit itself, nice. Uh, yeah. okay, well, um, I will load up the last article while we fix this, so so I'm gonna keep us on the screen, we'll still be here, but but yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, bib, okay, yes. Yes. If you're giving money over to, for something, for a chance to win something back, like that for me is the essence of gambling. Regardless of how, what it is that you're going to get back, like it's not you're not buying something. Well, you are technically buying something to keep. So as if I went to a shop and I wanted to buy a drink, I could I exchange money and I get something for that. But if I'm opening something that I don't know what's inside it, it's the same as the mystery boxes that you can buy from classic shirts or 
uh, the the old school loot boxes that you could literally pay money to a company and then they would send you something. Uh, it could be a Funko Pop, a T-shirt, a, a pair of socks. You genuinely have no idea what it's going to be that you're going to return. It's still a form of gambling, um, whichever way you want to swing it. See, see the loot. But it's the... what is. It, go on, sorry. I'm gonna say the old school loot boxes. I don't mind because you get a guaranteed return on your investment. Um, like if you put. 10 quid on that loot box every month and you get a mm. Funko Pop vinyl that's worth 8 quid, you get a t-shirt that's worth 5 quid, you get a pin badge that's worth a quid, 2 quid whatever, you, you might get 13 quids worth, 14 quid, you might get 25 quid worth of stuff, roughly, I mean obviously it's not going to cost them 25 quid because they bought it in bulk, it's the end of market stuff, blah blah blah, blah. but for some people you will get the uh, you, you get the money back, some people don't get the money back in perceived value um, but arguably when it's the um, the ultimate team stuff if you put 20 quid on and you get a bunch of silver players um which you can use just like you can use the t-shirt that you get from the loot boxes and, and the pin badges and so on but those those players are akin to just not you might as well not have them you theoretically can use them but i'm not you don't want to going <laughs> to use them they are pretty much useless i mean i mean you might be able to throw some of them in spcs and stuff like that so there is kind of ways around that which but i think that almost just works to, to try and justify uh the boxes of, as opposed to giving real value out of them yeah um anyway anyway we'll put a pin in that because we are well over time final article which i'm just going to gloss over so we can um uh finish things off for the week oh i need to reopen this there we go this one is about Cyberpunk. We haven't spoke about it for a while, so welcome back to the Cyber Scoop. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 sales projections look bleak. Could sell as a few uh, as few as 500,000 digital units in the March quarter. Cyberpunk 2077 is 70, 70, 70, 70, 77 sales are lagging behind. Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, and Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War. This is written by John Bittner at The Gamer. Cyberpunk 2077 sold incredibly well at launch, but it's having a difficult time on the market ever since. The latest projections from M Science, a research and analytics firm, indicate this trend will continue, with Cyberpunk 2077's sales dropping well below that of other popular titles. It shouldn't come as a shock that Cyberpunk isn't selling very well. Beyond all the bugs, glitches, and performance on last-gen consoles, the game has been pulled from some digital storefronts. All these factors indicate Cyberpunk will have trouble finding success throughout the year. Quotes, uh, we have seen significant deceleration in the pace of digital unit sales of Cyberpunk in our data. Corey Barrett, senior analyst at M Science, explained over email, we believe the company could sell as few as 500,000 digital units in the March quarter. This is based on the magnitude of deceleration we have observed, taking into consideration some of the commentary the company has provided on initial post-launch sales. Of course, the deceleration is in part a function of the delisting of the title from the PlayStation Store, though incremental sales appear depressed on other platforms where the title remains listed as well. Uh, Barra also compared Cyberpunk to other popular titles such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Call, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Effectively, the de decay rate of the new digital of new digital unit sales is much higher for Cyberpunk than for other releases, uh, releases such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. In other words, digital sales for Cyberpunk 2077 dropped off much faster than they should have for a game of this magnitude. It's worth pointing out that physical units were not included in the data, but it's very possible it follows the same trend. Barrett did end on a positive note, as he believes the next-gen Cyberpunk 2077 launch could swing things in its favour. Quote, We believe the title's best opportunity for materially expanding its adoption on console will come with the eventual next-gen optimised release. This is in a large part because a next-gen release would present an opportunity for marketing as an entirely new release, rather than being viewed as, in as an incremental bug fix to a game that is perceived as flawed. Does that surprise you, Bib? Cyberpunk selling particularly badly, particularly when you compare that to uh, similar games like Valhalla mm. and Cold War. What are your thoughts? I, I just just roll back for the chat. I genuinely, Madge has just put it. Cyberpunk is not for sale on PlayStation. I honestly forgot about that. I genuinely forgot that they pulled it from PlayStation. It's still not available to buy. Has this got something to do with it as well? But I mean, you can still buy it. You just go onto Amazon. Uh, game or whatever wherever you buy your games from but i'm actually gonna follow this back to you what do you think they need to do to try and bring this back because uh, I, at this moment in time i genuinely have no idea i would say um to, in two words fix it and that mm. fix it applies on multiple levels fix the game bugs which i know a lot of them have been fixed 
Um, fix, pardon me, fix the expectations of the audience. So audience expected the next gen experience because that is what they sold at its core. From the very first E3 looks, we were sold the the next gen idea, and then it was only at the last minute they went, ah shit, uh, yeah, we've made a next gen game, but you've got a last gen console. Oh no, it's not going to be the same thing. And it's like, well, you've literally throughout all of it, given me this idea that everything was going to work. When questioned, you were told that it worked incredibly well on those consoles. That will be an issue consistently. I don't think they can fix that, mm -hmm. but what they can do is fix it in terms of, if they can deliver a lot of that on next-gen consoles, like this article says, that relaunch gives them an opportunity to, to reposition the brand and say, look, brand new game. It's not that crap broken one from last year, and this is the super working Funky one. Yeah, nice. I believe CD Projekt have done themselves bad with this, but I don't believe that they are, by any stretch of the imagination, the worst regarded company out there. I still believe they still hold a lot of positive sentiment when it comes to uh, consumers, partially because of what they've done previously, The Witcher and uh, everything that's spun off of that yeah. in terms of, like, side card games and TV series and and mm -hmm. making that game go from it's okay but it's not quite perfect to oh my god they fixed so much stuff and there's so much content and there's so many hours that you can put into it this is amazing so I, I see I, can, I, I agree that they can turn it down I do see the future looking bleak uh, and half a million digital units in the March quarter that doesn't surprise me because it's not available everywhere and it's not fixed and tell you why that does not surprise me and I'm not talking digital units now but cyberpunk in general tell you why it doesn't surprise me uh, I've told you before it's not going to be the last time I do this um, but here I'll just open my jaw and I'll uh, draw and pull out my copy of cyberpunk there it is Mine might as well not yeah. be bought too. It's in its plastic shrink wrap, and that is where it's going to remain. So, yes, they've got my money. Um, but if that was a digital game, I just wouldn't have bought it yet. It wouldn't be here. I would have given it back, mm -hmm. and I would be sat there waiting. Because it's a physical one, I will sit on it and wait. So I count myself as one of these people that are not going to be buying it in the March quarter because it's not fixed. Fix it in every sense of the word and they will get my sale. And when I say my sale, what I mean is I will open it and put it in my console. When it's fixed, <laughs> I will play it. When it's fixed, other people will play it too. So does it look bleak? Yes. Can they fix it? I also think yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, United have, have drawn Granada and Arsenal Slavia Prague. Whew, that's, that's a tasty draw. I, I will take Granada. They were probably the team that I was leaning towards wanting the most in before United get absolutely slapped by Granada now. Fuck's sake. Mm -hmm. Slavia Prague is a difficult team to play against, though. Uh, so Arsenal, difficult difficult tie there. I say there, in before Arsenal slap them 7-0 in the first game now. Fuck's sake. Um, Cyberpunk yeah. next-gen release, maybe in time for Christmas 2021, seems a stretch with every disaster that's happened to them. Yeah, potentially, potentially, yeah. That could be it, though. I mean, if we're looking at huge installs of Cyberpunk, everyone was talking about getting the PS5 and getting Cyberpunk last year. <laughs> imagine imagine that being next year's Christmas present. Let's get Cyberpunk and the PS5 for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that could be the game changer, though. As, 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 as lol and memey as that is, that could be what it is, seriously. Um, so, yeah, March quarter might look shit. Um, the June, July, whatever, wherever the quarter ends, might look shit. Uh even to September, might still be looking a bit shit. But by December, I, th I think the December quarter could be big for Cyberpunk again. That's that's 12 months on, long enough for people to have forgotten um, the disaster and long enough for people to have got a new console and need new experiences to play. I could see that when it comes back to PlayStation, when it is a PS5 only title. P PlayStation going, okay, we'll let you have your digital edition on PS5, but your PS4 version is not gone, is not going out, so you're not having that one. I could see that's when they start to, to, to bring it back. Uh, it's going to be a collector's yeah. item at this rate, says David. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, for them, it's the bigger picture that will mess with them. The trust has gone for a lot of people. I think I can see them bringing it back, though. They bring out season two, and everyone's uh, singing Toss a Coin to Your Witcher again. That's it. Like, uh, when I say season two, of the Witcher Netflix series, I didn't specify that. Uh, they bring that out, and everyone's singing Toss a Coin to Your Witcher again. Suddenly, the favor starts coming back in, and the memes start to be a bit more positive. I can see them recovering it. Genuinely, it's been a massive flop, but it's also a massive potential.
for a turnaround. Uh, speaking of massive potential for a turnaround, we're going to turn this around and go right back to where we started. <laughs> Offline. Nice. Uh, but that is the end of the scoop. It's been a long one today. That's what she said. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Chappers, thank you for the 10-month sub. Gaga, thank you for your seven-month sub. Appreciate that. Uh, and everyone else that stuck around, dropping in their comments, uh, as well as the views. We appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. We are going to go offline now. Uh, are we coming back online, Bib? Uh, yeah, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. Why not? Nice. Okay, well, we'll be back bringing you some gameplay. Uh, if you want to know what it is, then best thing you can do is follow the channel because you get notified when we go live. Because we are coming back, we're not going to drop a raid or anything on anyone else because you can stick around here. That's nice. Stick around here. We will be back imminently playing games. Before that, is there anything you'd like to add, Bib? Yeah, again, thank you very much for joining us this week. Uh, it's been a very short week. Again, I said this yesterday. It just feels like this week has genuinely flown by. But thank you very much to each and every one of you that supplied us with the new stories. Followed, liked, subscribed uh, if you are watching this also on, on YouTube. And also uh, use your Twitch Prime because it's free. Um, but if you want to get involved with the show, there's two ways you can do that. I'm just looking at the chat and all you shaggers are putting in the, the links. I very much appreciate that. That's two ways. First of all, social media, ice cream world across all major social media platforms. Secondly, get into our Discord. There's an area in there called the Scoop. All we need from you guys is a URL plus your thoughts and opinions. We will then give you our thoughts and opinions on the very next show, which at what time tomorrow? Uh, oh, sorry. What time on Monday? <laughs> day. Tomorrow, not at all, but at Monday, uh, we will be live at 10 a.m. Ish. ish. 10 a.m. Ish. There you go. Ish is in the chat. Pow. We go live at 10 a.m. Ish. As mentioned earlier on the show, we go live when we can. It's usually around 10 a.m. But don't be surprised if it's half 10, 11, yeah. 11 half 11, 12, quarter past two, six in the air, evening, nine in the air. Fuck yeah. 10 a.m. Ish. We'll see you well at 10 a.m. Ish. Before then, though, we're going to disappear and we will be back with games. So if you want to stick around for some Friday afternoon fun times, then do that. Drop a follow on the channel. And we'll see you back here in a few. Until then, have yourselves a fantastic weekend. And, uh, <gasps> Stay frosty! Stay frosty!